Hello everyone, I'm Kaylin North, and today we're going to be talking about basic strategies for the spirit Ocean's Hungry Grasp. Ocean's very powerful along the coastlines, bringing fear, offense, and defense, but struggles to deal with inland lands. So they often want to take other players' coasts as well as their own and trade those for the inland lands on their board. We're going to be pairing Ocean with Shadows Flicker Like Flame this game in order to try and showcase what they can do in multiplayer. The solo build for Ocean is going to be similar to what we do, where we rush along the bottom track in order to get more card plays. However, in solo Ocean, we're going to have two major differences. One, because we need to clear our own inland lands, we're going to want to rely on majors to clear those inland lands, because they usually have stronger range or at least bigger effects that we can use to solve a built-up land that can't be handled by our starting hand. And then additionally, we're also going to have a lot more energy in solo, because of being able to, one, target ourselves with uh, Tidal Boon, which gives us some bonus energy, and two, perhaps more importantly, we're going to be able to get an energy for every health of Invader we drown, which is going to be twice as much as we get in a two-player game. Shadows I'm pairing here with Ocean, in part because Shadows has some good control abilities and can set up, can solve the inlands reasonably well while still getting Invaders out to the coasts for Ocean to devour. And... Thus, the two of them can combo pretty effectively together. They're also both good at fear, which means that this game should get to a higher terror level fairly quickly. Ocean starts with one presence on the ocean and one presence on the board, on a coastal land. I usually like to put that presence with a town if that's possible. Um, so if we're playing against like a Brandenburg Prussia or an England who start with an extra town on the coast, uh, that's great. We put it in that land. If I'm playing against difficulty zero, or I'm playing some scenario or something that prevents me from having any towns on the coast, I usually like to go into land one for this board just because of all the adjacencies. Um, most boards land one is going to be the land with the best adjacencies. So for example, on board C, the same thing would probably be true where we'd want land one for being able to reach land six or five, or possibly land two so we can reach four or five. But as it is with board D, I'm going to go ahead and put in land one. Invaders start in the mountains. And we begin with a growth two for ocean. This helps us get down our plays track faster. It's our two, only two presence adding option. And also in multiplayer, it's our best way to get onto, it's our only way to get onto other boards primarily. Um, in Three or four player games, you could or in four player games, you could potentially get onto a board via a coastal presence that's adjacent to another coastal land with the third growth, but that isn't going to come up too much. Um, it's it's especially useful in four player games if you want to get onto each board, uh, where you'll on turn two push in and also grow after you push in from one of your boards to another board. As it is. Uh, for this two-player game, we're just going to put both of the presents into the new ocean so that we have two presents on each board. And then our first turn play is going to be Tidal Boon plus Call of the Deeps. Um, Tidal Boon is pretty useful for both giving our partner energy as well as getting something pushed from an inland out to the coasts. So we really want to see that on turn one. Call of the Deeps is nice because we can use it to stop a build and hopefully drown an explorer. Um, in this case, we are only going to be able to stop a build in land 5 or drown the explorer in land 3. Um, whereas this explorer in land 3 is probably better handled by us playing Grasping Tide next turn for defense. Call of the Deeps is going to be most useful to get this explorer from land 5. Shadows is going to take a fairly standard opening here. We're going to gain 3 energy, we're going to place from the bottom track, and I'm going to have Shadows place in land 7, because that way we can push that town into land one for Ocean to drown this turn, uh, either using Tidal Boon or Mantle of Dread. Depending on where else the invaders explored, that'll affect which one we want to use. Um, Shadows is going to open with a fairly standard play. We're going to play Favors Called Dew and one of Mantle of Dread or Crops Wither and Fade, uh, depending on what seems to be the bigger priority. I'm going to go with Mantle of Dread because we are potentially going to be getting an Explorer or two into land one this turn, which would allow Ocean to get a little bit of extra energy, at least on a future turn. Uh, we may only be able to get the half energy this turn, but we'll see what we can do. All right, 
Shadows will drag the explorer from land 8 into land 7. This is fairly standard Shadows play again. We're just going to be gathering a bunch of Dahan there, set up a concealing Shadows play to take out a bunch of buildings and explorers in the counterattack. Ocean is going to use Call of the Deeps to grab that explorer from land 5, thus stopping both of the builds on its board, one from Shadows help and one from uh, its own power. And then Pound Ships to Splinters just gets us some fear. Invaders build in the mountains, explore in the jungles, and we get to go to our slow phase. So, because of what we have here, um, we're going to start with Tidal Boon. Uh, if they'd explored into land 7 with the sands, then I would want to Mantle of Dread that explorer and town into the coasts for Ocean. But as it is, um, Tidal Boon is going to work to push that town out as well as push those two Dahan that are in there. So I'm going to select this land, push the town into land 1, and I'm going to push the two Dahan into land 7 on our board, or on Shadows' board. This will let us actually get a full 5 Dahan in here to get the bonus fear from Favors Called Dew, which we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So that's pretty handy. Um, next up, uh, Ocean Breaks the Shore, we're going to drown the town that we pushed into land 1. And Mantle of Dread, we're going to take out this Explorer from land 4. We could push them into either land 7 or land 3, either one is a vi viable option. Um, the other thing we could potentially do is we could Mantle of Dread this Explorer from Land 1 into the Ocean. Um, I think that's going to be a lower priority here because Ocean is right now sitting at uh, no health of Invaders Drowned, and so getting an Explorer isn't going to give it an extra energy. So I'm going to instead use it to prevent the build in Land 4. So we'll Mantle of Dread, uh, push the Explorer, and we do have capacity to take it in this land. Um, depending on whether you're playing with events or not, you might have a preference on which land it goes into. I like to put it in the big land with all the Dahan, just because that land is going to blight, and probably no fear card is going to be able to stop it from blighting. So I'd rather just set up in that land and do the best I can with it. Next up, turn two, Ocean's going to take Growth 3. Uh, growth 3 is really nice here because it gets us onto the board, it gets us a third card, which we're going to be able to play after we place this Presence. Um, and hopefully we get a card that costs 0, um, because we only were able to get one energy last turn. Sometimes you can set up uh, to get 2 or more energy, in which case you have a lot more flexibility with what you draft. But in this case, we're going to just see what we get, hope for something 0 cost, and if we don't get it, we'll figure out something else. All right, um, we have a couple of good options here. Rain of Blood is nice. Uh, gets us a little extra fear. It has water element and air element, so it's nice for triggering pound ships to splinters. And Reaching Grasp is nice for similar reasons with uh, water and air element, but is also nice because it lets us target all of the coastal lands in the ocean with our zero range coastal powers. So things like Swallow the Land Dwellers no longer requires us to be in the land with the invaders. Same with Ocean Breaks the Shore. Um, our perfect power here is something with uh, water and earth, because then that would let us trigger the second level of Ocean Breaks the Shore and drown a city this turn. We didn't get that. Um, there aren't a, I, the, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is Gift of Minor Power or Gift of Power, which has water, earth, and costs zero. There are more powers that cost one and have water and earth, and so we might want to take one of those, especially if we were able to get two energy. But for now, I'm just going to take Reach and Grasp because I think it gives us the greatest flexibility. And also, potentially, if we play it on Shadows, we can use it to uh, basically get their special rule without having to pay any energy for it. For adding Presence, I like to always try and keep the number of Coastal Presence on each board balanced if I can, uh, just because we're going to be pushing in and out so often. So I'm going to add a Coastal Presence to, land C, or to board C. I'm going to put it into land 1. And then I'm going to push Presence, and I'm going to push a Presence into land 2, and a Presence into land 2 on the other board. The main reason for this is I like to coexist with the cities if I can, because I want to be able to drown them as soon as possible. Um, in this case, where jungles are going to build, I want to drown the town that gets built there so that Grasping Tide will be enough to defend this land next turn. 
Um, and if otherwise, otherwise I can drown the town that gets built in land one, or I can use swallow the land dwellers here in order to take out both the explorer and town, admittedly at the cost of a Dahan. So Ocean's gonna play all three cards. Shadows is going to go ahead and actually gain a power this time. We're gonna go for three card plays on turn two here. This isn't my typical shadow strategy, but because of the extra energy from Tidal Boon and because we got lucky with reaching Grasp, I think we can get away with it this time. Um, even without reaching Grasp, uh, we still might do that just because if we're able to draft a Moon Fire Power, getting Shadows' level two innate is really nice for generating some extra fear here. Uh, we could always take growth three again if we really need to either jump across the board further or we're really, really concerned about being able to afford all of our cards. But I think that, generally speaking, the stronger play here is to take growth two. We'll gain a minor, of course. Take a look and see... Um, well, now, now there's the possibility that I wish I hadn't put so many explorers in uh, this land because of Sap the Strength of the Multitudes. Um... However, Call of the Dahan Ways is going to be a fine power for us. We've got the moon that we can use it at level 2. Um, or, excuse me, with its threshold, not at level 2. Enticing Splendor is potentially nice, because we can get some of these Dahan moved around, as well as gathering explorers from other lands, uh, other than just the ones right by our sacred site. Um, Purifying Flame isn't too useful here. Its elements aren't great. We don't really need to clean up the blight we're causing just because of the difficulty we're at, um, but it could be potentially useful. And Sap the Strength of Multitudes is a nice defense card, but I think that just with its lack of good elements, it's not gonna be as useful as either of these two is gonna be for us this game. Um, now, as to which of those two we get, I'm going to go for Call of the Dahan Ways because I think it's going to be more useful to put in land one this turn. So after they build, I'll turn the town into, an, into a Dahan and let the land solve itself that way. And that's going to let Ocean focus on land two on this board. So we'll take Call of the Dahan Ways and then we'll add a presence. Um, normally I would want to add the presence into land seven here so we can target Concealing Shadows. Uh, but because of reaching Grasp, we don't need to do that. So we can be a little more flexible and we can actually make a Sacred Site in land 7. Playing from the bottom track again, as usual with Shadows, which lets us play three cards. And we finish playing cards. And now with reaching Grasp on Shadows, we get to use Concealing Shadows here for free. And we'll get to use Crops Wither and Fade later in the turn at a distance as well. Darkness Swallows the Unwary. Um, is going to be most useful at stopping a jungle explore somewhere, or stopping a jungle build, rather. We could take the one from land one, but as we said, we're going to solve that with Call of the Dahan Ways instead. And so the best one is going to be this one in land six, which we can pull into land five, where there is already a Dahan who will counterattack it during the Ravage. Grasping Tide we're going to use in land three, as we mentioned a little bit ago. And pound ships to splinters we can use in any coastal land. Again, it's just a little extra fear. Uh, defend three in all coastal lands. Okay, so that's overkill there, but that's fine. Invaders ravage in the mountains. We protect our Dahan. We take a blight, but we clear out a huge swath of the board with that. Invaders built in the jungle and explore in the sands. And we've already managed to deny and explore here, which is really nice. Um... And now we get to use Call of the Dahan Ways to turn this town into a Dahan, which is gonna solve land one for the next turn. Uh, we can use Crops Wither and Fade in a number of places. Because we have Swallow the Land Dwellers up, I actually mostly wanna use it in land two, which we wouldn't even normally be able to hit because we don't have any Dahan there. Um, I would usually here, if I did have to use my special rule with Shadows to target it, I would use it on land two here and turn this city into a town so that Ocean can drown one town with Ocean Breaks the Shore and a town and an explorer with Swallow the Land Dwellers, thus getting it a lot of energy and clearing the land. As it is, though, because we got Reaching Grasp, we're going to go ahead and do that here and then use Swallow the Land Dwellers there where we won't lose a Dahan to solve that land while Ocean Breaks the Shore drowns the town here and solves doesn't solve that land, but sets it up so that Grasping Tide will solve that land nicely next turn. 
All right, time to reclaim. We're gonna reclaim cards with Ocean. We're gonna gain a new power card. This is the earliest I would consider going for a major with Ocean. I don't like to go for a major this turn with Ocean. I like to save it for next turn. Um, I'd rather get another minor here and see what I can do with three card plays. But if you're really struggling for something or you've got a land that you just don't know how you're gonna deal with, this is a reasonable time to start going majors. Um, I am gonna go minor this time. Um, and there's Gift of Power, it's great for Ocean. Uh, non, uh, as we discussed earlier, has water and earth elements, costs zero. Great for uh, uh, setting up um, Ocean Breaks the Shore. It also does have Moon, which is nice for pound ships to splinters, although less urgent. And getting minor powers is always nice, more or less. Um, depending on who your teammate is, you may want to use it on them, or you may want to just use it on Ocean to give yourself more fodder to turn into majors later on. Gnawing Rootbiters is a very powerful card when Ocean is in play, just because pushing two towns, which was a little bit mediocre before, now can turn into destroy two towns by pushing them into the Ocean tile. Voracious Growth, again, we don't really have Sacred Sites that much as Ocean. Uh, we can play and have Sacred Sites if we uh, control our tidal, tidal growths in and out a little bit better. But usually I like to be spread out along the coasts more so than just concentrated in one land on the coasts. And so I try not to take powers that require Sacred Sites as Ocean if I can help it. Uh, the main exception to this rule is going to be for Majors. Sometimes you need a Major that requires a Sacred Site just so that you can hit an inland land. And then it's absolutely worth it. Do whatever you can to get that Sacred Site. Take the Major. Use it. Um, drought. We really don't need right now. We're not going to threshold it. The board state isn't out of control enough that we need the destroy three towns and the extra damage to each building. Um, so we're not even going to worry about that right now. Um, with how the board is right now, actually, I am going to take Gift of Power just because there aren't that many towns out for us to hit with gnawing rope biters. Um, and Gift of Power is going to let us set up uh, city drowns more easily, which is going to be really useful in land two potentially. So we gather one presence into each ocean. Next, I'm gonna gather the presence from the wetland because I wanna stay in the jungle here so that I can uh, drown the city after the ravage. And I'm gonna do something similar here where I'm going to uh, pull in the presence from the sands and leave the presence in the jungle just in case we have some other kind of issue. Um, there shouldn't be anything that goes wrong there, but I'd rather have the presence with the invaders. Uh, Shadows is going to reclaim, gain a minor power, hope for something that costs zero. Didn't get something that costs zero. Um, didn't get anything with particularly great elements either. Uh, so Shadows isn't really set up to use Encompassing Ward right now. Um, it could be useful potentially. It's a power we'd much rather have on Ocean because of the water and earth elements. Call to Migrate usually isn't going to do too much, although we could potentially stand to have some Dahan movement. Call to Bloodshed could be used to take out some invaders where there's Dahan built up, but the Dahan build up is really in a land without invaders right now. So I'm going to, and, and Call to Tend similarly could move some Dahan around, but I would probably take Call to Migrate over Call to Tend here because I don't really want the Blight removal. I'm not worried about that. And Call to Migrate's gonna let me do a little bit more in terms of spreading out the Dahan, as well as having fire and air elements, which could potentially be useful for Shadows later, but isn't that likely to be useful. So I'm gonna take Call to Migrate, usually not one of my first picks. Um, we're not gonna play it this turn most likely, but we have it just in case we need it. Um, Shadows is only going to be able to play two cards this turn because most of its hand costs one. So I'm going to play Concealing Shadows, and then I'm going to play one of my Moon Fire powers. So either Crops Wither and Fade or Mantle of Dread. And I think that we're going to get the most mileage out of probably Mantle of Dread here. Uh, Crops Wither and Fade isn't going to be too useful because we have enough elements for Ocean to drown this city. So we don't really get a huge benefit out of downgrading a town or downgrading the city into a town. And both of these sands, we're going to try and handle in other ways so that we don't need to worry about um, downgrading the building that they build. So uh, speaking of the sands, we're going to handle the sand in land six by dragging the explorer out. 
with uh, our darkness follows the unwary power. And for land four, we're going to solve that with Call of the Deeps, which we can use to gather and explore into land two. We're also going to play Grasping Tide to defend land two. Um, again, this is something that you might not want to do if you uh, didn't have... Oh, actually, I just realized if I'm playing both of those, I'm not going to have the right elements to drown the city. So, in that case... Uh, we're actually probably going to want to play Tidal Boon to give Shadows a little extra energy and Crops Wither and Fade instead of Mantle of Dread. That way, with Tidal Boon, we can give Shadows the energy to target Crops Wither and Fade in land two, and we can still defend the land, take out the two explorers with the Dahan counterattack, and then finally uh, use Crops Wither and Fade to turn the city into a town, which we can then drown with Ocean Breaks the Shore. Um, we can't afford to play any of the other cards, so we finish. Call of the Deeps grabs the Explorer from land 4. Darkness Swells the Unwary grabs the Explorer from land 6. Uh, Concealing Shadows doesn't really do too much this turn. We're just going to play it somewhere and get the Fear. Um, we mostly needed it for the Moon Element. Pound Ships to Splinters gets us some more Fear. And Grasping Tide gets us some Defense and some more Fear. That'll also get us to Terra Level 2. Again, these two spirits are pretty fear-oriented, and so we're able to rush fear a little bit and get to a high Terra Level fast. Um, in each land, we get some extra defense from Dahan, and we get to remove some dudes from coastal lands. So uh, we'll take out the Explorer in land 1, and it doesn't really matter too much what we do with the other one, because this Explorer is going to die in the Ravage, these explorers are going to die in the Ravage. So we'll just take out one of these explorers and call it good. Invaders Ravage in the jungle. We'll kill the explorer, deal one damage to the city. That explorer dies. They build in the sands, but we cleared the sands. Explore the wetlands, which unfortunate a little bit that we put that explorer there, but that's fine. We can now Tidal Boon, giving Shadows a little bit of energy, which is just what we need in order to target Crops Wither and Fade. And then Ocean Breaks the Shore should win us the game. So that's Ocean. Um, we didn't get to the point where I would draft a ma major power, unfortunately. Uh, I would have done that next turn with our Growth 3 option. Uh, we'd play four cards, including the new major power. And from there, we would have probably been able to win the game if we hadn't already won the game on this turn. Um, Ocean is a pretty powerful spirit. I uh, hope you got a chance to see some of that. Uh, to talk more about the growth pattern, I really just keep alternating growth one and growth three for the entire game uh, at this point. So tides come in, tides go out. Um, we get our presence on the coasts. We take our presence back from the coasts. And Ocean also is notable, I think, for pairing well with control spirits. Um, with Shadows or River, you can do a lot to get those buildings and explorers onto the coast so that Ocean can drown them, or you can sometimes even just push them straight into the, co into the Ocean tile, uh, which works incredibly well. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video valuable. If you have any comments or questions or things you disagreed with, please let me know in the comments section below, and have a great day.